Oh, good evening. Great. We're recording this webinar. We're going to be live on Facebook in a moment, I hope. Uh, welcome, everybody. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, based on your time zones. But uh, welcome to this very, very special webinar of the Society for the Protection of Nature in Israel, coming to you live from Tel Aviv, as always, here. I'm Jay Shofit, Director of Development here. Uh, David Amichai, as usual, is doing our back office from his home in Jerusalem. Uh, hi, David. You're on camera still. Um, and uh, with us are two very, very special guests. Uh, our own Professor Dr. Yossi Leshem, a uh, world-renowned ornithologist and a general um, man about the world. Uh, pleasure to have Yossi with us. He's given, he's done webinars before. I'll introduce him more formally later. And we are thrilled to have live from Amman, Jordan, uh, General uh, Mansour Abu Rashid, the director uh, and founding director of the Amman Center for Peace and Development, uh, a retired general of the Royal Jordanian Armed Forces, uh, and, and Yossi Leshem's partner, our partner in um, in many cross-border uh, projects involving barn owls you're gonna hear about today. And uh, most excitingly and most recently, uh, in fresh from a trip to North America, uh, where we discuss this, um, our new, hopefully soon to be, inshallah, cross-border wetland reserve, Farupin, uh, on the Israeli side of the Jordan River and uh, across the Jordan in, into Jordan. And you're gonna hear all about that incredible project in the next couple of minutes. Uh, we're just gonna get going here now. We're already over a hundred people, a uh, hundred people viewing from all over. So welcome, please let us know in the chat uh, where you're from, uh, that you're here. Uh, Professor Leshem and General Mansour, as we affectionately call him, uh, will be talking for about 45 minutes and then we'll, I'll be fielding your questions. Uh, so please, uh, tune in from all over. Let us know where you're from. I'm hoping the chat feature is functioning. Uh, and uh, yes, it is. Great. Um, it's been an exciting week here for SPNI. Exciting month, I should say. I mentioned we were in the States. Uh, Yossi Leshem and Dan Alone, our deputy CEO, and I were in Austin, Texas for a couple of great events and meetings. And we were then we moved to the New York area. We had with General Mansour. Um, a huge event in Tenafly, New Jersey at the uh, Kaplan JCC. Um, maybe some of you were there. I haven't looked at who's, who's, on, who's online with us yet. Uh, and then we moved to Toronto and you're gonna hear about these uh, incredible events um, tonight. Uh, Yossi and, and the general will be speaking about them as well as all of the projects we're doing. Uh, we had a very special guest uh, in a uh, celebration of Yossi's 75th birthday and the fact that we are in fact honoring Yossi um, in his life work to, um, to protect birds and people uh, by dedicating the Kfarupin site to Yossi's life work and vision. So uh, we're thrilled to have him here. We're thrilled to have the general with us. David is uh, homesick, at, uh, homesick um, but managed to get in. So after our three week trip to two week trip to the States and Canada, incredible event in Toronto, uh, we, um, we came back a few days later and had an incredible mission in Israel uh, from our ASPNI and uh, CSPNI Canadian affiliates. We even had our, one of our trustees from our UK group join us, uh, 25 people on an intensive week-long nature trip, meetings with our, uh, with our staff as well all over the place. Uh, thanks to uh, all of you who participated in that. We have another mission coming up in March, third week in March. Um, behind the scenes nature tours you can't miss. Uh, really, really uh, um, deeply moving and emotional even for us jaded Israelis, but I think a good time was had by all. Too much food was eaten and nature was seen in its glory. Peak of the migration season, being in the Hula Valley at sunrise and watching thousands of cranes take off at once, not to be missed. Anyway, so we're four minutes after the hour. I think we will begin to get moving. Oh, it says chats. Everybody's oh, everybody's writing the questions. The chat's disabled. David, I'm wondering if you're seeing that, uh, and if that's not possible to deal with. If not, I would say just guys use the uh, use the. Is that a chat? Yeah, okay, people are writing in the chat now, so the chat is okay. I believe yes. No. Um, 
Well, whatever. Um, if uh, if you can. Uh, oh yes, with chat's fine. Everybody's coming in. Uh, you know, we have people already from Toronto, from New Mexico, from Luxembourg, from Seattle, Manhattan, Mexico, Charlottesville, Charlottesville, Virginia, Oak Park, Illinois, Silver Spring, Maryland, Calgary, Alberta, Cambridge, Finger Lakes of New York. Anyway, people from all over the world, our supporters. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much to our boards. Uh, those of you who are here in Israel, uh, six, seven of you are boards and our staff are on this mission. Um, thanks especially to our hosts uh, in Toronto, uh, Leon Sokol and Maggie Kaplan, and in, 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 in Toronto, the Go in, in Tenafly, I should say, and in Toronto, the Goldbergs, uh, in, in Austin, uh, Jonathan Severstein, our current board chair. Thanks, everybody, and let's get moving. With very little further ado, allow me to introduce um, two incredibly um, esteemed gentleman who I had the great pleasure to travel with for a couple of weeks now in North America, Professor Yossi Leshem of Tel Aviv University, uh, professor of zoology, a world-renowned ornithologist. Uh, he's been working tirelessly for decades and decades as a birder without borders, uh, preserving our migration fly route and uh, helping prevent crashes and uh, with the uh, with airplanes over Israel and uh, doing a million things to uh, save birds and to benefit all of humanity. And his partner in many of this for the last um, more than a decade has been General uh, Abu uh, Rashid, Mansour Abu Rashid of Jordan, uh, retired from the Jordanian Armed Forces. He was a confidant to the King of Jordan and uh, basically uh, negotiated the peace accords between Jordan and Israel. 1984, former head of military intelligence, and then uh, in his retirement founded the Amman Center for Peace and Development, one of Jordan's most important non-governmental organizations working for uh, peace development and especially through environmental cooperation. And we're going to hear about that today as well. A packed, a jam-packed 45 minutes. So uh, with no further ado, those of you who have heard Yossi before, you know what treat you're into. And those of you who are meeting uh, General Mansour for the first time, um, Welcome, everybody, and uh, thank you guys very much for this uh, very special webinar. Yossi, take it away. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Jay, for introducing uh, General Mansour and myself. This is a great pleasure to sp be here together, especially the General Mansour, our partner for two decades with the Barn Owl Project and other projects of uh, regional cooperation. And today, one of the key issues will be startup nature. This is an opening uh, painting, which was done by Zev Labinger uh, from Israel, who is a keen builder and an artist, showing the new site in Kibbutz Farupin, which we will talk later, and the purple heron flying over. And on the back, you can see the mountain of Jordan, where General Mansour is going to establish also the continuous. You can see here General Mansour in our tour in the JCC, in uh, New Jersey, lecturing about uh, his activities with the map of the other side of Farupim, where he's planning now to make one big uh, startup uh, project on both sides of the Jordan River. We had an, a very exciting tour, which was organized by Dan Alon and by um, uh, Jay Chauffet uh, in uh, Austin, New York, and uh, Toronto with General Mansour, as you can see, holding a barn owl, which we'll tell you later, and uh, with uh, Dan Alon, who is not joining us today. As, as you might know, on the left side, you can see General Mansour in 1994 on the Peace Treaty with uh, Mr. Rabin and uh, President Clinton, and uh, His uh, Majesty King Hussein, the late King Hussein, and the late Ezra Weizmann. So what we want to start is to tell you a bit of what, what General Mansour and myself were doing together under the title Birds Know No Boundaries. And we believe that the Dove of Peace failed and now the Barn Owl is doing the job much better. The question is, how do we want to see the Middle East? Do we want to see it like you see many times in the newspaper or in the TV? or what we are doing, trying to get together Muslims and Jews, enjoying the bird migration. As you might know, 500 million birds are migrating over the Jordan in Israel twice a week, 1 billion birds on a limited area. So this is something which is very special to the Middle East. 
And the question is, what is the vision? I always like to show this slide where you can see President Bush standing like a bird lover with a binocular, but he forgot to remove the cover of the binocular. When I got this slide, I thought maybe it's not really polite to show the uh, president like this, but it happened also in Israel to our Minister of Defense with the same pose. So you should know we have a long border with Jordan, uh, a few hundred uh, kilometers. So it is very important to try and keep the peace together. And with the leadership of General Mansu, we succeeded and we'll tell you soon to get together farmers from Jordan and farmers from Israel and from the Palestinian Authority to use the barn owls as pest control agent uh, in the agriculture fields. So you can see here what I was already saying. We have so many birds flying over the Middle East from Central Eastern Europe and Western Asia. For example, the lesser spotted eagle, the entire world population of this eagle is flying over us twice a year. And uh, we have about 600,000 white stocks flying over Israel twice a year coming from all over Europe. And the entire population of white pelicans are flying about 60,000 pelicans year after year. They come, they have uh, to have a less. The weather in the Middle East is of course very nice. So if you are a bird lover, you can see here, as I said, 1 billion birds, you can see 550 species. And if your wife or your husband is not really interested uh, in the bird migration, they can enjoy the summertime. Unfortunately, the state of Israel made a huge mistake in the early 50s of the last century, where they dried out the Hula Valley, one of the most important wetlands of Israel. And uh, they, was, they, were, they dried it out to, to make farming for the new kibbutzim of the state of Israel. This was a big Zionist uh, project. But unfortunately, at that time, no one understood, no, no the government and not the JNF. This is a real disaster because, for example, all the pelicans need once in five days to feed on fish. And after it was dried out, they didn't have a source of food. This happened also in Turkey, Syria, Iraq, Jordan, and Lebanon. So many migrating birds we try to stop in the Middle East didn't have a place to roost. So that is the reason that we are trying to develop this new uh, vision, which is led by uh, Dan Alon, start up nature, try and renew wetland in the Middle East, in Israel, in the Jordan, and in the Palestinian Authority. Now, what we are doing to, because the, the, the pelicans, for example, after the Hula Valley was dried out, they are lacking a source of food. So now we have a big reservoir in, near the coastline, and uh, on the autumn migration, we are just uh, uh, buying from the farmers um, fish, and twice a week, we are coming with a big truck that the pelicans with every time with eight ton of fish. And you will see that the pelicans learn very fast to come and enjoy the big meal free of charge. And on the right side, you can see the, the, the truck coming with the eight ton of fish. And when they start here to put the fish for the pelicans, each pelican can eat about 1,250 grams, and then they continue to fly to southern Sudan, which is there they will be stayed the entire winter. So you can see now, every year they are coming. Now, the story with the barn owl started uh, because the farmers in Israel and in the Palestinian Authority in Jordan used a lot of pesticides to try and kill the rodents. We were doing a lot of damage in the fields. And unfortunately, because the heavy use of pesticide, thousands and thousands of migrating birds were killed including like in this picture, an imperial eagle, which is a, a global endangered species, which was killed because of pesticide in the Hula Valley. So uh, in 1996, we started our first cooperation 
together with Jordan and the Palestinian Authority. And it was uh, funded by the German government. And the idea was to put radio transmitter on migrating strokes. Uh, Dr. Angela Merkel, who was at that time the Minister of Environment of Germany, uh, uh, gave us the funds. And we made a big project under the title Migrating Birds, No No Boundaries. We put radio transmitters on 120 G German stocks, and we got uh, schools from Jordan and from the Palestinian Authority in Israel, developed a big website uh, that they, they could follow it online. We gave the stocks Jewish name, Christian name, and Muslim name. And I want to show you one sample of a white stock which we put the radio with the GPS, and the stock, as you can see, moved from Germany through the Bosphorus, Turkey, to Israel. Then she moved to Sudan, and she stayed in Sudan for two months, and everything is online, so the student could follow the Joel, as her name was Princessa. And after two months, uh, Princessa moved to uh, Cape Town, and she did the same route for 13 years successive year, year after year, the same route, the same time. She stayed in the winter on a tree in uh, near Cape Town. And then in the spring, she was flying back to her husband who was wintering in Spain, as you can see on the left side. He was waiting her in the nest. And then she came back to her husband exactly on the same route, again, through the Middle East and through Turkey, back to her husband in Germany. So the student could follow uh, the migrating birds. And here you can see a summary of 20 years of our study. All the stocks of West Germany were flying through the Gibraltar because they have to use thermals, hot air, and over the Mediterranean, no thermals. So the stock, every dot is a stock with a GPS flying from the Gibraltar to West uh, Africa and mainly over the Middle East, along the Great Rift Valley, from Germany, across the Middle East, till Cape Town. And then on the spring, they made exactly the same route back home to Germany. And as you can see, the student could follow the bears online. And we got also the students in, in Bechan Valley, where Kfarupin is located, uh, Palestinian students, Israeli students, and Israeli Arabs and, and Jordanian together. And the same project is also led by uh, a Cornell University. They are following Godwits, which are nesting in, uh, nesting in Alaska. And they, they, uh, the, the Godwits are flying from Alaska and from Siberia Along, you see every dot again is a Godwit with a transmitter, with a GPS. They stop every year in the auto migration in the Yellow Sea in China for a week or 10 days. And then all of them are flying to uh, Australia and New Zealand. They stay there the entire winter. And then in the spring, they fly back uh, to uh, the nesting grounds. So this is exactly the same as it happens in the Middle East. We have a, the same, we are putting radios on grief and vultures, which we are losing. And we have a lot of educational activities, which is done in Jordan and done in Israel. And for example, we had one grief and vulture, which we put a radio, which was nesting in Dana Nature Reserve in Jordan, and comes every day to Israel to have some kosher meat and then flies back to Jordan. I was leading also a study with the Israeli Air Force. The Israeli Air Force had a lot of collisions with Baird. They lost 11 aircraft, which crashed. Three pilots were killed and 75 collisions with a damage between one and $10 million. So we put volunteers from the coast Mediterranean till the Beishan Valley. Every kilometer, two volunteers with telescope and binoculars. We were using radars for the first time in the Middle East to follow the bird migration. And when there was the big migration of the Russian immigrants in 1991, we found the Russian general, Dr. Leonid Dinevich, who was an expert on radar. He brought one radar in Latrun in the Armour Memorial so we could follow the bears with the Russian builder, which was uh, 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 developed as a bird radar. 
and we used motorized glider. We were flying every day with a flock of eagles or raptors or storks or pelican from the Egyptian border with the same flock till the Lebanese border to measure the heights of the migration. And we even used for the first time in the world drones, unmanned aircraft to follow the migration. And for the Air Force, we made new maps, which is, are called Belt Plow Zone. They stopped to fly on the routes that we mapped them. And immediately, the number of collision dropped dramatically by 76%, saving the Israeli Air Force a budget of one and a half billion dollars. And of course, the life of the pilots. So we made also conferences with the uh, 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 generals from Jordan, Turkey, Greek, and the United States. And I wrote a book, Flying with the Bears, about our study with the Air Force. And the, uh, the ceremony of uh, inaugurating the new book was in the year 2000 with, uh, at the President House with Ezra Weissman, who was also the commander of the Air Force. And then I was very excited to learn when President uh, Weissman finished his cadence in July 2000, he flew to His Majesty King Abdallah and gave him an official uh, uh, present, the book Flying with the Bird under the title, like the birds who knows no boundary, hopefully the Jordanian and the Israelis will keep the peace with no boundaries. Now I want to tell you about the project with General Mansour and myself are leading now for two, two decades. We built nesting boxes for barn owls. A pair of barn owls are eating between 2,000 and 6,000 rodents every year. So the number of uh, nesting boxes rose up from 14 in 1983 to 5,000 today. We're making a lot of education with posters. The farmers meet each other from Jordan, from the Palestinian Authority and Israel. They are becoming good friends. We are running seminars, as you see here, sometimes all of us are dancing together. And we had even five events where we have an Israeli male and Jordanian female, or Israeli, Jordanian male and, Israel, and Israeli uh, female, building a nest together in the nesting boxes. And seven years ago, we even found a pair a barn owl with two ladies, a bigamia, and they succeeded to raise 19 chicks. Can you imagine? Not easy to raise together one male and two females, 19 chicks. Shimon Peres, our president, was supporting our activity, and he came to learn what we are doing together in the field. And uh, I want now to give the stage to uh, General Mansour Abu Rashid, who was leading really a very exciting project from war to peace. Please, General Mansour. General Mansour? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Yussi, for your presentation. And thank you for our friend Jai for his uh, introduction. I am glad to be in the Super Ring with my colleagues of, from Israel. Uh, in fact, we started uh, our cooperation in 2002 when I met uh, Professor Yussi Leshem in, in Beijing talking about how we can cooperate in some of the, of the project along the Jordan and Israeli border. He, he came with a, an idea to use the barn owls uh, in, the, in the farms, in the field, to uh, uh, keep uh, using the pesticides uh, in the farms. Uh, and uh, in, in our career, I also, how I, I made how I change from war to peace. Uh, I, I fought the Israelis 20 years. And then after that, after we signed the agreement, I am now fighting with the Israelis for building peace between the two uh, nations. Uh, this is when I was in the army. I met late uh, Ishaq Rabin, who made the peace with the Jordan and with some of the generals from the Israeli uh, defense army. Uh, then after that, I, I uh, convinced the Jordanian people uh, to uh, using the, the barn hours. As you know, barn hours, it's a bad luck in the Arab and in the Muslim uh, uh, tradition. Uh, and, and, and then uh, we, we, we succeed to implement our program along the Jordan Valley 
And now we have more than 350 uh, barn owls covering the border of, from north urban area, where is our border with the Syrian, until the Jordan Valley south to the Dead Sea. We succeeded in, in, in putting all these boxes and we succeed to uh, also to convince people to use the barn owls. And now we are, we have a workshops, we have also a, a training courses for the students, for the students in the schools, uh, students of university and with the civil society. Here you can see some of the Jordanian field officers uh, 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 with the uh, with the T-shirt uh, with the barn hours uh, from Israel, and to the right picture you can see one of the our field officers uh, trying to find some checks in the in the in one of the boxes to start to put to put drink uh, in that. And uh, you see also. He invited me to give, to give a, a presentation in the Knesset, the parliament of the Israeli state. I go there and I give a, 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 a presentation about the cross-border co cross cooperation and one of the projects that very successful, the Barn Owls project. Now we change the Barn Owls to be uh, to be the, the the logo of the be of the peace uh, between the Arabs and Israeli, uh, we change it to from from Dove to put a uh, barn hours, and I am here with uh, Mr. Rivkin. He was the spokesman of the Knesset and the Minister of Environment when I visited Israel uh, many years uh, many years ago. And now we're using also. Uh, uh, with the uh, Israeli army, we're using the path as a as a tool to bring people together from the uh, two uh, societies. And the Israelis they use the bunkers along uh, the Jordan Valley in the in the war status. But now we change it; those bunker to be a, a houses and a uh, and a place that the bats can go there and can live there. And we're using the bats to, to also for the uh, uh, killing the, the, the flies along the uh, Jordan, Jordan Valley. Uh, we have another also of projects with the Israelis. Uh, this is one of the bunker that one of the journals, he hosts me with some of the general return from the Jordan army. And also uh, we invite some of the commanders uh, in the Jordan Valley from both sides, Israelis and Jordanian, to meet and to, take, to talk how, we, how they can cooperate together in environment issue. This is very important in, in our area. Also, we uh, succeed to bring uh, uh, 17 or 20 artists from all over the world uh, to the Dead Sea. Uh, as you know, Dead Sea is drying every year and go down one meter. Uh, we use the artists as uh, to, to educate the, the student and uh, to use this uh, uh, nice pictures uh, for saving the Dead Sea. Here are some ladies of from Jordan, Palestine, and you see Professor Leshem, you see Professor Alex, when we give uh, uh, lectures uh, for the girls, how they can use the barn owls and instead to use the pesticide. Those, those are uh, teachers uh, in the schools, and when they go to their schools, they can also teach the students, the, the boys and the girls, how to keep the barn owls and not to allow to the hunters to kill the barn owls in the, in the, in the farms. Yes, you see, uh, here also the Palestinian, I think you see, uh, he can also now talking about the Palestinian side, how they cooperate with, yeah. 
whether they're Israelis, whether they're Jordanians. So That's we true. have also Palestinians who are joining us in the Palestinian Authority, and they are also understanding that you see now, we have in the Middle East, as a general said, now more than 5,000 nesting boxes that are used to reduce the pesticide. And you can see if you open one of the boxes, you see five chicks and look how many rodents are just lying where the parents are bringing uh, the, the rodents to the nesting box. Also, we put the online cameras into the nesting boxes. And next year, also in Jordan, there'll be an online camera in the nesting boxes. So you see the yellow, the number of uh, the use of pesticides was uh, dropping down dramatically. Also, and of course, as the general said, they are changing the mind of the of the Muslims that uh, the barns are bringing good luck and not bringing bad luck. And you can see the farmers from Jordan and the Palestinian and Israelis holding the barn all. It's called in Arabic Buma. Buma is a barn all in Arabic and smiling. So they are putting the nesting boxes. We have also uh, Jewish and Arab students, Bedouins from uh, the Negev, who are coming together with uh, Jews, Israeli students. And you know the owls, they are vomiting uh, pellets. And the, the students are sitting together, opening the pellets to learn what uh, the owls eat. You see, it's like a kinder egg, always surprised what is in the pellets. And uh, since we started with the general, with a high success, we got now also Cyprus. This is the Minister of Environment of Cyprus, who was last year in Israel. And we got Greece also joining us. And we have a professor from Lausanne University, Professor Alexander Roulin, who is a world expert of barnouts, who also joined our activity. And together with the general and uh, the Alex, we went uh, and Baruch Spiegel on the right side, this, this is General Baruch Spiegel, who was the co-partner of General Mansur in the peace treaty in 1994. And they, since then, they are very close friends and together they are trying to change the idea from war to peace. And um, a few years ago, the president of Switzerland invited 150 ambassadors all over Switzerland to come and see in Switzerland what we are doing, the general and myself came there and the Palestinian, we showed this is the president uh, of, uh, of uh, Switzerland. And there was also the ambassador of the Vatican. And after a year, the general and myself and the professor from uh, Swiss and the Palestinian came to visit the Pope. This Pope, Pope Francisco is very keen to protect the globe. And of course, his message is to one and a half billion Christians is very strong. So we sat together telling him our cooperation. And last year, after Israel signed the peace treaty with Morocco, Professor Imad Shirkawi from Morocco is now joining our project. And uh, he is also starting this following the footsteps of General Mansour. And he is also chairing now a working group uh, on uh, this issue also peace. So we hope the situation will change and more uh, countries will use the burnouts as a base for peace. We have also in Bechan Valley a new system which is called Atlas that with antenna we can follow online uh, the, the burnouts. And we have a, a PhD student, Shlomo Kain and his supervisor, um, uh, O. Spiegel, because it will be also in Jordan and Israel at the same time. Uh, here you can see one of the owls, which you can see is moving from Israel, crossing the border, as I said, no boundaries, and getting into Jordan. So this is working very well. We also are following the, the Swifts. The Swifts are nesting in the Western Wall. So every year we make a ceremony to accept the Swifts by the rabbi of the Western Wall. And uh, they are also nesting in the Church of Nativity in Bethlehem. So this is also something which get together. Also, uh, an, uh, an, a sculpture made, a sculpt of a tree of peace, a tree of hope in the old city of Jerusalem with 150 swift in the real size uh, instead of the leaves of the olive tree, which is a symbol of peace. And last year, General Mansour and myself and uh, Alex, we went to Dubai to the World Expo and we, try, we told our story in the Middle East to get it on a much bigger scale. And the Minister of uh, Environment 
uh, from Dubai and from the Emirates agreed to join our project. We told them what we are doing. And um, uh, uh, last um, uh, week, we, we came back from Toronto and we met the famous uh, uh, writer Margaret Atwood, who got a prize in Tel Aviv University, Dan David Price, and she went with us in the field to see the project of the barn house. So this is now running very fast. We have our minister, uh, uh, Frege of Regional Cooperation, who supported our project. And in November, General Mansour and Professor Chirkawi from Morocco and our other Palestinian friend, we went to our president, Herzog, who hosted us, got very excited how the Barnhaus are becoming a symbol of peace. And as you can see here, the Barnhaus are doing really a great job to reduce the use of in pesticides. Two messages to take home before I tell you what we did together with General Mansour in the last uh, two weeks. One is to think out of the box, and other is, uh, Mr. Perez once told us, if you want to run fast, run alone. If you want to run far, run together. And that we are trying now to do, to run together. And that was the reason that we went to the United States and to, uh, to uh, Canada. And, but you have to focus on what we are doing. This I took in South Africa. Our public bar is presently not open because it is closed. This is a very simple message. So Dan alone is the one who is now leading the, the project of a startup nature. He's the deputy general director of the Society for the Protection of Nature. He works with more than three decades. And we really salute Dan alone for this. And before we went to the States, our president, who was so excited what we are doing with the Barnhouse, sent us a one and a half minute of a greeting, which I wanted you to listen. Oh, sorry. Yossi, Professor Yossi Leshen, my good friend. What a pleasure it is to be joining this rich chorus of voices, celebrating all you have done for Israel and for the world over your 75 years. It is a beautiful gift to know that the goodness that dwells in your heart has found many avenues to improve our world, helping to foster peace between peoples and healing for our planet. Your groundbreaking Owls for Peace project, which, as we know, promotes barn owls as biological pest control agents and simultaneously necessitates cross-border cooperation in the Middle East, is but one brilliant example of your brave creativity, which is bettering the world. And we at the President's Home are very proud to be your partners in this wonderful venture. I applaud your landmark contributions to conservation, to nature, to peace, and based on your level of energy, your creativity, and your neshama, we can expect many years of your untiring labor for the common good. So may you continue to find great satisfaction, may you delight in one's accomplishment after another, and may you go from strength to strength, mechail and chayl, together with your wonderful family. Happy birthday, Yom Uledet Sameach, my friend Yossi, and may you go from strength to strength. So now I wanted to tell you very briefly with General Mansour, which we'll tell you again in a minute, we were flying from the Middle East to uh, Toronto, and we started in Austin uh, together with uh, Jonathan uh, Silverstein, who is the chairman of uh, ASPNI, and we gave them a lecture about what we are doing in question together with Jay, Dan Alon, and myself, which is Austin very nice. And Jay has a very special date. And then we went to the JCC in, of, uh, on the place in uh, um, uh, New Jersey. And here you see the former uh, chairman of the ASP and I uh, in, uh, in the JCC, um, uh, Leon, uh, uh, and maybe General Mansour, you will tell a bit about what we were doing there in uh, the JCC. General. Uh, yes, uh, and, uh, and two weeks, three weeks ago, we've been in New, in New Jersey and we met the JCC people there. They, uh, uh, they uh, invite around 400 people. They come to listen uh, to our uh, presentation about the cross-border cooperation. All of them, they are inspired about uh, our work. And uh, 
Also, we explain him how much is important to have this kind of project to continue the relationship between the two people in Jordan and Israel, and in the future also between the Arabs and Israel. Uh, we are working very hard for seek of peace between the civil society in both countries, and we are working in a, in a good manner and in very uh, successful uh, way. Also, we, uh, I am uh, also working uh, with Dan alone uh, to uh, cooperate together to start up the conversation, uh, conservation area uh, along uh, the border. The Israeli, they started two years ago, and now we are going to start very soon to be, uh, to have one of uh, these areas in the, in, in near uh, Kfar Robin, uh, along the Jordan Valley. I hope we can succeed. And also when you are coming to the area next year, you can visit to this, to the two sites on the uh, two, uh, on the uh, Jordan River. I was on Shabbat, on Shabbat because I'm religious. I went to the synagogue and was a, 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 near, in, in, near Beacon Hotel in uh, New York. And when I went the end of the play, I was really surprised where our general director of the Ministry of Defense, who was the commander of the Air Force, came to the synagogue. A good friend of him is praying in the Sephardic synagogue, and he gave a lecture, and when he suddenly saw me, he told them about what we are doing. So uh, you see, we were traveling just before the Halloween. So you see here the general with all the Halloween in New York, and we met Paul Winter, who is right, who is almost, he got seven Grammys, he's from Connecticut, and Paul Winter is almost finishing a new piece, which is called Flyways. So he came to meet the general and us in New York and discuss how we can finish, uh, you see, Dan alone and the general together. Then we went uh, to Toronto and general, maybe you want to take the contact with uh, General uh, Magnus, please. Yes, uh, here we are with General Magnus. He is the four star general in the uh, American uh, army. Uh, we met him in Jordan, and here he is with, with uh, uh, his wife. They hosted us for dinner and to talk with the people there about the Jordanian-Israeli cooperation across border uh, along the uh, Jordan Valley. And here you can see some of our hosts in, uh, in Toronto uh, in, in one of the of, of the dinner with Dan alone, with uh, uh, Yossi and and his uh, wife. And I want to emphasize, we have in Toronto four donors, uh, three brothers, Gary, Marty, and Bobby Goldberg, who are totally committed to what we are doing. And they have helped us a lot in the entire tour. And uh, on the left side, you see Michael, uh, who was helping to make the event. And on his right side is Bobby Rubinov, who is the number four on this team from Toronto who are so much committed to our activities. And when we gave the lecture, we were really privileged to host uh, Margaret Atwood, the very famous uh, author who wrote more than 70 books. And uh, we gave her the picture that you saw in the opening. She enjoyed a lot, mainly the cooperation between Jordan and Israel. And uh, she is really contributing a lot for the protecting of the bears around, around the world. We went also together uh, to see the fantastic um, autumn uh, and see birds uh, in uh, Toronto. Unfortunately, on the last two days, General Mansour had to leave because his uh, brother passed away. But to be in Toronto and see these fantastic leaves and fantastic colors for an Israeli is really uh, something that you will never forget. And I want to finish my, uh, this uh, presentation before we will open the stage uh, led by uh, Jay for questions. I hosted last week Dr. Jessica Meyer, who came to receive an honorary doctorate from Weizmann Institute in Israel. Her father, the father of uh, Jessica, uh, was an Israeli who fought in the independence uh, war in 1948. And then he moved to Sweden. He married a Swedish lady, moved to the United States. And Jessica was 205 days 
in space on the international station and i was because she did her phd on a uh, diving of of uh, penguins and also about indian uh, geese who are flying on 20000 feet with a lot a lot of pressure without uh, oxygen so we became friends and as you can see she is giving a speech here in weisman institute in memory of ilan ramon on the right side the israeli astronaut who unfortunately was killed in the mission of STS-107 of the Columbia Space Shuttle. So she was flying in the space with the flag of Israel, and she is very much committed to Israel. And I took her to our uh, ringing station in the Jerusalem Bird Observatory near the Knesset. And I want to tell you, with this we will finish and open for the question. I was highly uh, excited when Marty Goldberg from Toronto, one of uh, the donors who are moving the whole thing, he, he brought us um, an, a, a, a bottle opener, which looks like a sewing bird. And he, he bought us seven of them. So I gave it to some friends, but I kept one copy to uh, Jessica uh, Meyer as a present for Martin, because Marty uh, Goldberg, was a, a, a person who took care on Ilan Ramon when he came to his training in NASA for one year. He was all the time with him. He took him around the States and Canada. And when, when he was unfortunately in the tragedy was killed, he, he took very serious treatment to the entire family. So this was a present for Marty to uh, uh, Jessica. And as you can see here, she was very excited to get this present on the right side. You can see the, a very nice design of a, a, a bottle opener, which looks like a bird. So really, thank you for listening to the general, to me. And I leave now the stage for um, uh, Jay, open to questions to General Mansour and to myself. Wow, Yossi, General Mansour. Kol HaKavod, Todah, Shukran. Wow, what a, what a journey of 45 minutes there uh, from continent to continent and topic to topic and uh, with uh, respect, guys, uh, everything you guys have done and are doing. And uh, I learned something new. It's not the first time I'm hearing most of this, but you learn something new every time. Uh, just a couple of quick comments. This will be available on our website. We'll be sending out a link. Uh, all of our updates uh, have at the bottom a uh, link to all of our uh, upcoming and, and, and recorded webinars on our site. It will probably take a day or two, uh, and that link will be available for anybody's use. Uh, and then people ask about our missions as well. We mentioned them in the beginning. Um, we'll be sending out information about that. Uh, you can contact us at... Uh, our international emails or my me, my email. Uh, we have one scheduled for March 19th, I believe, a week-long mission. Um, and I'm just going to start with one quick comment, guys. I noticed that the barn owl that you had put a GPS tractor on, which uh, goes back and forth between uh, the Galilee and Jordan, over the hundreds of kilometers of potential border to fly over, it happens to fly over basically our Kfarupin uh, site. Uh, that's where it decides to cross. Uh, so it is gonna be more than welcome uh, to rest, you know, if it needs to uh, at, our, at our wetland reserve. And uh, you guys you guys did a great job of talking about that in General Mansour. Uh, we're so grateful for the work that you did so quickly and efficiently with the professionals on the Jordanian side of things at the Jordanian River Authority of Jordan and with the Jordanian Water Ministry. And we hope there's going to be real movement and some things to announce soon on that. So thanks very much. Okay, a bunch of questions. Um, and hi, Maggie and Leon, probably waiting from the airport. So glad to see you. I hope you guys saw this whole webinar. You guys are stars. Um, 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 a uh, question about France. Do we work with the French birders at all, the Bird Protection League, the EPL or LPO in France? Uh, do either of you know anything about bird protection in France? 
Yeah, of course. In the, first of all, uh, SP and I are a member of BirdLife International. This is an umbrella organization which has 120 countries. And France, of course, has an organization which is called LPO. And they are also doing a lot of work with the bird conservation. And there is a lot of problem in France with hunting and also with poisoning. So we are well connected to uh, our friends in France. And they, in France, for example, they have the Pyrenees. We had in the past a, a pair of bearded vulture nesting in Israel. Bearded vulture in Hebrew is Paris. Our president, Shimon Peres, is named after the bearded vulture. So we lost our bearded vulture. They are extinct. We hope in the future maybe to get from the Pyrenees in France some bearded vulture to reintroduce them back to nature in, in Jordan and in Israel. Thank you. Thanks very much. A uh, question about, uh, do we do any work with Echo Peace? And uh, I'll just say, I'll let you answer. And I know that uh, we had a, in September, there was, we hosted a Ramat and Nadeev uh, conference with uh, Jordanian and Moroccan participants as well about wetland rehabilitation. We had fascinating Zoom lectures from the EU and what's going on in Scotland. Uh, and there was, a, I met a uh, very interesting uh, representative of Echo Peace from Jordan who was there. And I know Dan alone is updating Guido Brumberg. He's coordinating uh, with whatever we're about to do and beginning to do in terms of the cross-border wetlands. General, do you, are you coordinated with Echo Peace at all? Uh, yes. Uh, Echo Peace, they have a long history with the, with the SP and I in Israel. And also together we, uh, uh, we raised a proposal uh, for the rehabilitation Jordan, uh, Jordan River. And as you mentioned, uh, last, uh, last September, we were together with them in the, in the conference that held by the SPNI. And also they talk about their relationship with the, uh, Israeli, uh, with the, with the Israeli side. Uh, they are working very hard, the ECOPs. And also we are partner with them. We help them and they help us to find to find opportunities uh, to bring especially students from the university and young people to join us in our activities uh, along the Jordan Valley. Also, they also cooperate with us to bring some people to visit Israel and vice versa. And they have a good location in the Jordan Valley as a touristic area. It's near one of the water dam. Uh, we, we use this also, uh, this place for education, education of, the, uh, of the people who are living uh, on that area. Great, thank you very much. Okay, a few more questions, let's move along. And this one is very insidery baseball, uh, I think for you, Yossi, uh, we, as we say, it's just an insider kind of question. How does the Atlas system differ, differ from MODIS? And are there plans to start using MODIS? Well, I didn't, I, I didn't go to the question, sorry. The, 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 you mentioned the Atlas system of uh, bird migration tracking, right? Atlas? Yes. So yes. there's another system called MODIS. Do uh, you know about it or any plans? Uh, no, the Atlas is something new, which was developed by Professor Ranatan and then uh, Professor Siban in Tel Aviv University. Instead of using the satellites, we, we installed in Beit She'an Valley and Harod Valley 12 antennas. And every time when they all, an owl is moving, you have a triangulation and you can get exactly the location every eight seconds. So out of 136 owls that we were putting the radios, 20 of them moved to Jordan. Now we are, now we are training also the big story is that a team of General Mansu are now learning, we are, our antennas are covering also Jordan. And the coming year in 2023, the team of General Mansour will also put radios. We have already the radios on the Jordanian barnhouse, and I believe they will come to Israel. So this is going both sides uh, movement, which is of course another exciting project, which is a joint venture of uh, Jordan and Israel. That's very interesting. Um, and I'll just I'll follow that up then with Russell's question, uh, our longtime uh, chair in, uh, with Leanne Sokol in the States. Russell Rothman asked about, are there other cross-border projects going on other than the ones you've mentioned? I, I think not so many. Yes. Uh, this is pretty special. What else is going on? No, no, the yes. general. 
we, we, we have many uh, uh, cross-border cooperation projects, but the barn owls and the bird migration, uh, this one is very successful. Uh, we have in agriculture uh, uh, issues, uh, we ask uh, uh, formal people from the Jordanian side and non-formal people uh, to join the workshop that uh, 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 held in uh, near, the, near the Jordan Valley, not far away uh, from there. And as you know, now the, the two countries, they, fa they faced a, a big problem with the red, red palm weevil. Uh, red palm weevil uh, doesn't uh, recognize the, the boundary. They can cross easily. And, and this, uh, this weevil, it, it, it goes to the, to the palm trees and eat, eat uh, uh, the, 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 what they called it, eat it, the tree from inside. And oh. as you know, the, the palm trees, it costs a lot of money. Uh, for that reason, we have a joint project now uh, to find solution how we can uh, uh, protect our farms in both sides of the Jordan Valley in Jordan and Israel against the red palm weevil. And we succeed uh, for, for uh, uh, this project. We have another project, sport projects, uh, uh, dialogue between uh, young students uh, in, in both, in both uh, uh, countries. And also we have a retired general forum. Also this is between the Jordanian uh, general and Israeli general who fought each other many years. And wow. those journeys also, they build peace between the two countries. And next week, we have uh, a, a yearly uh, conference for the generals. And, wow. And they will be coming to Israel about 12 or 13 generals from Jordan and 12 or 13 generals from Israel. And General Manso and myself will give, and Baruch Spiegel, we will give them a lecture about our uh, environmental uh, um, project. And I have to tell you, you know, when I started the first time with General Mansu, the general who organized the meeting, he told me, Yossi, you cannot tell generals about owls. They are, they are generals. They are not interested. But when we showed them the barn owl boxes in Farupin, they got excited. And General Mansu was the first one to take the flag and lead it in Jordan. Wow. Very, very impressive. Um, uh, Martin Epstein said that he saw a honey buzzard migration a while ago. Have there been any studies on honey buzzards? Yeah, about honey buzzard, uh, over 1 million honey buzzards are flying over Israel every year. A million? So if, huh? A million? Over a million. We, they were counted one by one, over a million. But in a lot, you, you know, they, these are huge numbers, and all of them are coming every year between the 3rd of May to the 18th of May. So if you want to see honey buzzard, come to a lot between the 3rd and the 18th of May. And then if you are lucky, you can see sometime in what you can, some days you can see nothing, but some days in the two weeks, you can see a quarter million in, in three or four hours. I have seen it, Dan alone have seen it. And then you see sometimes the, the sky is like a huge cloud coming from Sinai over Israel going to Jordan, and then they are going to East uh, Europe and West Asia. So this is one of the raptors who are coming on a very big scale over the Middle East. And unfortunately, two of the Israeli aircrafts were crashed before because of honey buzzards. So this is one of the biggest migration of raptors over Israel. Wow, those are impressive numbers. I did not realize. Ah, okay. I thought uh, seeing 10,000 cranes taking off in front of you over an hour at the yeah. sunrise in the hulas a lot, yeah. but wow. How high do those honey buzzards fly? What's their elevation? Ah, okay, so most of the honey buzzards are flying up to 4,000 feet above ground level because they are using the thermals. You know, they are riding the thermals and gaining height and then they're gliding. So that's the way they can save energy and they don't have to eat for three weeks. They can just fly from, uh, from Zimbabwe to Poland in one flight with no food, but then they have to feed and get more fat. And so most of them are up to three or 4,000 uh, feet. But you know, that's another story. For example, geese 
or, uh, um, or gulls, sometimes you can see them in 35,000 feet high, you know, 12 kilometers. They can raise up and then they use the jet stream and they fly instead of 40 kilometers per hour, 200 kilometers per hour. Wow. So, the, you know, these birds are very smart and they know how to behave very okay. well. Good, good to know. Listen, we're at the top of the hour now. I want to respect everybody's time. Before we go, I want to um, just in case you guys have had a chance to read some of these comments. Uh, Sandra writes, my heart becomes full and happy whenever I hear two men speak of their work promoting peace through nature preservation. They have given me so much hope. And everybody's agreeing with that. Um, Seymour and Gloria in Toronto wonder why we're not getting more media exposure. There is some media exposure. We've had some great, you mentioned in the New Jersey papers and in Israel and the Aaretz and in 21C in, on the Hebrew media press. I don't know if it's been reported in Arabic at all yet, but uh, we're still working on the New York Times. Hopefully we'll be bringing the New York Times correspondent to Kfar Rupin in the next week or two. Um, uh, and uh, everybody's thanking us for this presentation. People who saw us in Tenafly are on tonight. Thank you guys, other than Maggie and Leon. Uh, everybody, Yossi, General Mansour, Shukran, thank you, Toda Rabah. Um, I wish uh, everybody watching and all of our supporters and everybody in the Middle East and beyond peace and uh, shalom and a great week. Um, any final words, guys? Thank you. I hope, inshallah, the peace will be in our area. People, they can cross border freely. People, they can also go around uh, the, the birds, the bird watcher, they can cross the border freely, freely also to see uh, the, the, the migration of the birds along the Jordan Valley. Thank you, Jelly, for your, uh, for your efforts. And uh, thank and you, uh, Yussi, also. Sure, and thank you, General. And for come you. to Israel, come to Kfar Upin, to the Startup uh, uh, Nature Project. You can see it soon in both sides of the Jordan, many birds to be seen here. And it's of course open for tourists and for everyone who wants to enjoy a new, very special place in Israel and Jordan. Inshallah, the three of us will meet in Jordan with Dan very soon. Okay. Right okay. Side of the okay. We hope. Bye-bye. All the best. Thank, Thank you. you so okay, much. Bye -bye. Shout out to my mission buddies. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye -bye. Thank you, David Amichai. Bye. Bye-bye.